Hello, this is Ileana Douglas with Trailers from Hell, and we're going into screwball world. Theodora Goes Wild is a terrific social comedy that punctures small town hypocrisy, and as the title suggests, celebrates a woman's right to love whomever she wants with complete and utter abandon. Pretty risque topic for 1936, but Irene Dunn, out to change her image, took on the comedic role of Theodora, and it changed her career. The screenwriters, Mary McCarthy and Sidney Buckman, Buckman was the screenwriter of another one of my grandfather Melvin Douglas's screwball comedies, She Married Her Boss, provided my grandfather with one of his best roles, I think, in the genre as Michael Grant, a shallow New York playboy transformed by country living who follows his heart and his love back to Theodora and the small town of Linfield. Now, a group of small-minded puritanical busybodies, isn't that always the way, headed by town gossip Rebecca Perry, Spring Byington, are trying to stop the local Linfield editor Jed Waterbury, Thomas Mitchell, from serializing the sexy bestseller The Sinner in his paper. Now, the author of The Sinner is none other than Linfield's own meek little mouse, who plays the organ at church on Sunday, Theodora Lynn, Irene Dunn, writing under the pseudonym of Carolyn Adams. Now, Theodora lives with her two spinster aunts, Aunt Mary, Elizabeth Risden, and Aunt Elsie, Margaret McWade. Now, Margaret McWade specialized in playing spinsters, which I love. It's like, what a career. Remember me? I, I played a spinster in that one. She began her career in a vaudeville act called The Pixelated Sisters, later reprised the character to great effect in another Columbia film, Mr. Deeds Goes to Town. Now, fearing Carolyn Adams is going to bring disgrace to her family, Theodora travels to New York to visit her uncle John Lynn, Robert Grieg, and tells her publisher, Arthur Stevenson, Thurston Hall, that she can no longer write any books for him. She should have never left the farm because he introduces her to the artist who designed her book, Michael Grant, Melvin Douglas, and suddenly she wavers. Now attempting to live up to her image as Carolyn Adams, a sexually liberated woman, Theodora goes out on the town drinking and dancing for the first time with Michael. They return to Michael's apartment for a nightcap where he plays soft music and shows her his etchings and a risque painting of Eve and the Serpent. Oh, Grandpa. Now, Theodora may write about sex, but she has never experienced it, and she runs from Michael's apartment with her honor intact. The production code president, Joseph Ibreen, was very unhappy that the decent and church-going characters in Theodora Goes Wild are made to appear ridiculous, stupid, and silly, while their city counterparts and Theodora, who engages in extramarital affairs and drunkenness and debauchery, were made to look attractive. Sounds good to me. Michael, of course, follows Theodora to Linfield, where he discovers with amusement her secret, masquerading as a tramp needing work. I guess, you know, it works if you look like Melvin Douglas. He and his stray dog, Jake, Jake the dog, by the way, get ready, amazing comedic dog actor. They move in with Theodora at her Aunt Mary's house. Now his transformation begins. He begins to warm to the small town ambience of Linfield. After Theodora takes him fishing and berry picking, he decides he's not leaving until Theodora reveals to the town that she's Carolyn Adams. He recounts how he refused to follow in the footsteps of his father, a banker who didn't want him to pursue a career as an artist. And he tells her, everything Linfield doesn't want you to feel, you write about. Theodora is inspired by Michael and not only reveals to the entire town that she is Caroline Adams, the trashy author they're obsessed with, but she also declares her love for Michael and demands that these snoops leave them alone. Theodora has declared her independence, but now Michael confesses he's not completely free. He's trapped in a loveless marriage to a New York Society woman arranged by his banker father. Theodora now decides to turn the tables on Michael, follows him to New York, sets up camp in his apartment as Carolyn Adams until he now declares 
his independence. Back in Linfield, Jed Waterbury and the Bugle are having a heyday, and Uncle John Lynn brings news from home that, yes, Theodora has gone wild. Dunn was reluctant to do a comedy, but her entree into Screwball garnered her a second Academy Award nomination, and it led to her accepting another Screwball comedy alongside Cary Grant, The Awful Truth, which became a huge, huge hit. Michael can no longer deny his happiness. He leaves his wife and his banker father and that incredibly cool apartment with all those etchings behind. He returns to Theodora and Linfield with his stray dog, Jake, where he gives thanks to her for giving him the courage to finally be free. I have to say, one of my great memories of watching my grandfather on screen was at the TCM Classic Film Festival, introducing a nitrate print of Theodora Goes Wild, scheduled for a 10 p.m. screening at the Egyptian. Lo and behold, completely packed house, and a lot of people actually had not seen the film. I hoped it would hold up to my glowing introduction because I think it's one of the best screwballs there is. Took a seat in the balcony, Instantly, I was transported to feeling as if I was in an audience from 1936. Rolling laughter filled the Egyptian. The highlight was the scene. Michael has come to Linfield. He takes up residence at Theodora's aunt's with his dog, Jake. It's late at night. And to tease Theodora, he starts whistling the song that he played on his stereo in his apartment when he was attempting to make love to her. And the aunts start to complain that about Michael's infernal whistling, and then it embarrassed Theodora, tries to make him stop by loudly pounding on the piano and belting out, be still my heart. And the louder she plays and sings, the louder Michael whistles. Then Jake the dog starts howling because of the noise, and then the scene ends with a frustrated Theodora slamming down the piano, which scares the cat, Elsie. She jumps from her aunt's arms. Jake starts chasing her. Everyone starts chasing behind. And then Michael, just completely pleased with all the destruction he has caused, lays down, gets ready for bed. There was just a complete avalanche of uh, applause. And as we left the theater, just a sense of exhilaration of our shared late night comedy experience. This is for a film made 85 years ago. The director, Richard Boleskovsky, was a member of the Moscow Art Theater and followed the Stanislavski acting method, striving for realism. My grandfather cited Boleslavsky as a director who created an atmosphere where the actress felt free to experiment. Now, an example of this is a fantastic scene where Theodora is feeding Michael berries. Both actors break, meaning they, you know, they break from character. When my grandfather is face completely stained with berries, starts laughing and choking as Dunn shoves a big pile of berries in his mouth. It's messy and it's fun, and it's very out of character with studio films where leading ladies and men were always supposed to look perfect. Theodora Goes Wild was Boleslavsky's final film. He died, sadly, in 1937, only 48 years old. Hollywood lost, I really think, a great director. And I have to say, as theater going has waned because of the pandemic, my memory and my love for this film has really only deepened, so I hope you give it a look. Theodora Goes Wild. Mm -hmm.